Hi everyone. So back again with my collaboration with Intercraft and continuing with this memory box that I've started to make using the new Stamperia range that Intercraft have had in stock. So make sure you head over to their shop and have a look at all the wonderful papers. So again, we're trying to make as many uh, photo wallets to decorate the box using just the one uh, sheet or the one pad of 12 by 12 papers. So this time we're going for these double diagonal stacked pockets. So this will come in a pair with me because what I'm going to do is just use a piece of the 12 by 12 just as it is to try and keep those patterns going. So if you look at the mechanical sea world one I've done, it's all come from the same sheet and just works along. And this is great for putting your six by four photos in the big one, your four by four or your six by fours into the smaller one. All the little images we've got at the end from our kit can also go in there. So two stacked diagonal pockets and we're gonna use this tribeswoman one. I may notice it's not quite 12 by 12 because I've cut off a bit of the bottom. That's what I ended up using on the front of my box because I quite liked that tassel effect coming down, that tribal tassel. So I've already cut a little bit off that, but it doesn't matter because what I'm going to do is look for a piece which is roughly nine inches by um, six and a half and I found I could use this tribally bit here and this snaky bit there we are up there to decorate my um, pockets so I didn't quite like the tribeswoman I'm sorry so I'm trying to work around here which is how I managed to use the bottom bit and I'm using the top left bit here so I'm going to grab two sheets of black car socks, it's just some 220 GSM and I'm going to grab my trimmer. So first of all I need two base pieces. So my base pieces are going to be cut at six and a half by four and a half. So let me just get this lined up. So six and a half by four and a half. So there's gonna be no closures or anything this time, just some pockets. There we are. So we've got our two base pieces. Let's grab the second one. And this time I want to cut it at seven and a half with a short edge on the top. Now let's put the long edge along the top, and I'm gonna cut these at five and a half. Five and a half and five and a half. So that's all my cutting done for now, but keep your score, uh, your cutting board close. So those two base pieces, I don't need to do anything with those. But the other two, the larger ones, the five and a half ones by seven and a half, I'm gonna just score half an inch on every side. And the other one. So it's like a two for one here. It's one design, but we're gonna get two pockets. So that's how we're maximizing our papers as well. Okay. Now what I also need to do is put my long edge back in and I'm going to score at five inches just down to that score line. Okay. So that's on my left hand side. So on this one I want to do it on the right hand side. So I'm going to flip it over, mark it down to that line, bring it back to the front and it'll be on there. If you want to rescore it that way just a two and a half it is. So now I've got a five inch mark this side and this side. Okay. So let's put that to the side. So that five inch mark is where my diagonal cut is going to start. 
and it's going to go down to where those two lines cross. So down to that corner there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ruler and my pencil and I'm starting at that five inch mark. I'm lining up my pencil and I'm going to line it up so it goes through that cross and to that corner. Don't press too hard. Okay. So I've got a diagonal coming down that way. I'm remembering now this one is the opposite direction. There we have it. You probably can't see it. Let me see if I can angle it a bit better. There we are. So it's going from that five inch bit where it met the score line and down and through that cross. And then this one in the opposite direction. So now I'm gonna and let's let's cut straight up this time. I did forget to bring my long scissors, so I'll just have to use my sharp snips first. And we are gonna cut up this one. So why I haven't used my trimmer is I could have because I've got that line this time. In fact, I may show you how to do that with the other one. So I'll grab my guillotine here. And from that corner, and so there we are. So we've cut those triangles off. Now these pockets, actually upside down now, so we're going to turn them over and turn them this way. So this is the back of our pocket, the back, uh, the first one, the biggest one, and then this is actually going to be our smallest one. So what's going to happen is it's going to turn and come down onto the bottom ones. So what I'm going to do is just, oh, let's put the tape on first, it's easier. You get a better adhesion if you do it first. There we are. I'll show you now why I taped first. The reason I taped first is now when I cut back, oh sorry, I'm off camera, I'm cutting from that score line backwards. So I'm sort of making an arrow head here. So when I turn over, I've actually got tape right up until that edge. I'm going to do the same on the top one. So what I'm doing is creating a flap for my pocket. And just like I do with other corners, I cut towards that cross. And then rather than go straight, just angle it slightly and bring it back. And that sharper angle means when we fold them back, they won't touch, and so we're not going to add extra bulk. So that's one pocket done. And again, I'm going to cut up to that score line. At this one, I'm going to cut towards the cross and sharper angle. And with this one, the arrowhead again. So that's our two triangular pockets done. Now just score them. And now we can do the same and prep our larger ones. I think I'm running out of tape, so I have to get some more before the next one. So just the two edges and this short one. And yeah, I have run out of tape. So what I'll do, I'll just go grab a new one and be right back. Okay, back with the new tape. Let's carry on. So, down the long edge. Between those two score lines and down this edge. Now, because of the way we cut earlier, 
we've already done that angle there so we're just going to do our cut to the cross and then angle out and up to the score line there save that one I'm going to do the same with this one There we are. And then just score all three of those backwards. So what you want to make sure is that once you've done this, that you've cut this at enough of an angle that it doesn't show when you turn it back. So let's have a look. If you see, you can't see the back one. Nope. Okay. So we've got two going that way and two going that way. And just a case now of gluing them onto our base pieces. So stick the largest one first. So what I'm going to do is just take the base I'm just going to fold it backwards and I'm going to use then the other side because this has still got the um, cover on so it's not going to stick I can maneuver it into position hold it now squeeze it down and tear it off and now I can do the same I can fold that back And that's the first one done. So let's just add the triangle the same way, but this time to get some leverage, I'm actually going to fold back two of them. Just a little bit like that. So I can line up my corner without it sticking. Hold it down. Let's put my bone folder to get it nice and flat. And here, nice and flat. And exactly the same now with the other one, just going in the other direction. So this is my non sticky side. It just helps me have some time to line it all up nicely take back a little bit this is so short I've got to take it all off but I can line up that top before it glues down there we are and now that triangle Fold it back. And there we are. Two diagonal stacked pockets. Nice and easy. So what we're going to do now is bring back our paper. Now, the size of these wallets are four and a half by six and a half. So what I need to do is think about four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So if I got four and a quarter, so eight and a half would be twice as much. So what I'm doing here is trying to get the most out of my paper. So by six and a quarter. So I'm just gonna flip it over and line it up at 
six and a quarter. I'm going to come down to that eight and a half mark there. So what I've got now is both my layers cut out, but I've kept all of this intact. But you don't have to. If you know you're not going to be using it, just cut it straight across. And now I've got four and a quarter. So those are the two pieces for decorating this. So although we've got a totally different pattern here, I think it's quite nice because that will tie this bit in. So, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to place it in and line up. So I've got the black border. I can see where my pocket is coming down there and here. So I'm just going to mark a bit further down here. Okay. And then I'll do the same with this one. I can see that it starts there. So I'm just going to come down a little bit and just in from the corner. And that's how I'm going to do my layers. So I think, did I mark that incorrectly the first time? Yeah. So I actually marked them there. What I needed to do was mark there for the first one, isn't it? Are you all screaming at me, Paul? You're marking it in the wrong place. And now, uh, I don't think I marked it well enough because I can't see it. Here we are. So from that one up to the corner. So there's the corner. So I've just come down a little bit. And that's just going to give me that layer to tuck behind and that black border. So that'll be inside there. And then I can see the mark there and just into that corner and then just take my black soot again Up to you. you don't have to do that bottom one because it's going to be tucked behind the pocket and then the last one I don't need to do that you don't have to because that's going to be tucked in as well I'm just going to glue this one in So I'm tucking it behind this diagonal pocket. You've got a little bit of an overlap because we came down a little bit. I'm going to attach the middle one. So this is a good one because you can you've got that pattern then repeating because we've taken it from the one sheet and this is the perfect one if you wanted to add some of those cut out tags and little images you get in the sheets 
the ones from the inside cover. I'll show you in a second. So here's the cover sheet. And on the back, you get all these tags. So if you're gonna cut these out, this could be a nice place to put them. So there's one done. So let's do the second one. And I'll try to measure it properly this time. So we're gonna get it in. Oh, I didn't want to go in the back one, did I? I wanted to go in the triangle one. Let's do this one first. Right. So this time, here's my diagonal is starting it. So I'm just coming down an eighth of an inch. And it's going to come all the way down an eighth of an inch below that pocket there. There's a pocket there, so I'm marking just a bit lower down. Now I'm going to put it on the top. So my pocket ends there. So I don't want to take it to the corner. I want to come back a little bit. And let's find out where the pocket starts. It's there. So let's just mark it. There. So whilst I've got that one in place, let's draw a line. And from just below that corner, there's my mark. Okay. So when you look at it carefully, you can see what I mean by coming back a little bit. It's not going to that corner. So don't panic, you are supposed to have that little bit of a straight edge at the bottom before you start cutting. And the same up here. You've got a little bit before you start your diagonal. Do you know what? The more I look at these papers, the more I see. I love this little tribally pattern here. Yeah, I failed to get the whole of the snake into this bit. But he still looks pretty cool there. And again, let's just get that distress ink. And I've put it upside down, which is not the best thing to do. So all three of this bit. So that's my bottom one. This will be my top one, so I only need these two. But do all three if you want to be uh, safe. And again, just do all four just to be on the safe side, but I'm gonna risk it for speed. So here's my first one, so just lift that pocket. And the diagonal. Final so yeah, it's that way. And there we have our second diagonal pocket. So there we are, two diagonal pockets with the continued pattern going down each one but also going across so that both of them tie in together and then these two then when we get our box be careful I don't hit the stand they will go side by side and they'll fit perfectly 
in there for your 6x4 photos, your 4x4 photos or whatever ephemera pieces you've got that you want to put into your box. So thanks for watching the latest instalment. Make sure you head to Intercraft and have a look at all their fantastic prices on their Stamperia products. I'll add a link as well in the description. And when you look at the description, there'll be a cutting list, but also a link to my Facebook group called Paper Crafting with Paul. So if you do have a go at making any elements from this tutorial or any of my other tutorials, please head to that group and share with us. We'd love to see them. So click that subscribe button if you've enjoyed it. Give me the thumbs up and I'll see you again with another wallet to go into this book or the box, sorry. See you soon.